Hey guys, it is Sonia from Junk Monkey. How's everybody out there doing today? Have you made it to hump day successfully? Can you believe how fast this week is flying? We have been so busy behind the scenes, guys, taking care of all you guys with your happy mail, and it makes us happy to be able to serve you guys. So I just want to say thank you so much for just the tremendous support that we received this past weekend. We ran, of course, specials from Thursday through Monday, and you guys came and you showed up. And so we have been working. Kate's here taking a break from packing and shipping. Say hello, Kate. Hello. She's back there as well, manning the chat with us here. And as you guys pop on, please do chat with us. Hey, Debbie. And say hello as you pop on. Tell us uh, where, you're, where you guys are watching from today. It's always fun to see where our friends are joining us from. So today I am going to do a paint tutorial for you, show you how to do an aged effect, okay? So even if you're working with something that is newer, something that you found at a junk store, but you know what? It's like perfect shape and you envision it to be part of your decor, something interesting, but you want to make it... Uh, you know, A, maybe just a little bit tarnished and you wanted to make it look really aged and old, but, um, you know, maybe you want to go ahead with B, you're, you're planning things out for Christmas and you want to add a little bling bling into your actual, you know, where you're, you're decorating, maybe onto your mantle or something like that. So I'll show you how I do it behind the scenes, share with you some tips and tricks to really make it easy. How does that sound? Give me some hearts if that sounds good. So um, I have to tell you that this piece today, right over here, do you see it? Do you see it? This is actually a piece that my neighbor Sharon found when she was out junking. Hello, neighbors who junk, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You guys just have like, somebody out there have a neighbor in their life that just like, you know, you're just so blessed to have them as a neighbor because they just, they just keep showing up and adding goodness to your life. So Sharon is my neighbor that junks and thinks of me, thrifts and thinks of me, you know, thinks of me when I'm sick, you know what I mean? That sort of thing checks in on me. And I will tell you that living abroad from, you know, not being from the U.S. and uh, moving here from Canada. Canada. I don't have any family here in the U.S., right, other than uh, the family that I married into, which is a man has a very small family. So, you know, I don't have any mom to take care of me. So Sharon has been that person in my life that is so kind to just check in on me and to, like, make sure I'm okay. You know what I'm saying? So I am thankful for her today. And so when she asked me if I would be so kind as to just um, work with her and help her out, she she's somebody who is very actively involved in the community. And so she's a part of a lot of Christmas pageants that are coming up as well. And so so uh, she found this, which is really cool, and she's like, hey, Sonia, do you think that if I drop this off to you that you could possibly, like, just, like, bling it up, kind of bring it together for me? Because I see this being used in our Christmas pageant as maybe, like, the vessel of myrrh, you know what I'm saying? Like, a, a really cool vessel that contained medicine, that sort of thing, to uh, play into her pageant. So this looks really cool because it's really ornate looking. It's really made of plastic, guys, right? Like... How cool is that, right? That you can go out and you can find stuff at the thrift store that is just made of plastic, but it might serve the purpose overall, right? Because if we had to actually pay for a priceless vessel, let's be honest, right? If we're a junker and we're a thrifter, it's probably not going to fit our budget. But she said, she, you know, she loves this like chippy patina that's going on here. Um, but the middle of it, do you see? We've got grapes. We've got grapes. And I don't know if these are plums or what they are. And I think that's a pineapple right there. Yeah, that's a pineapple. And uh, peaches. And so... This right here is like, if you saw it in person, is a purpley orange kind of color. So she's digging this out here. It's got this chippy patina kind of look onto it, which is cool, right? An aged effect already. But this here, because it's not the same, it just like stands out as a fruit bowl. So we want to make it overall look together like one color. So she told me she loves this already, but she needs to hide this. And she likes, you know, gold, metallics, but she also wants to keep it aged, okay? So I'm going to work on this this project for Sharon live today and hopefully give you guys some inspiration because this could be beautiful for your mantle you know lots of sparkle and bling bling comes out during Christmas right you know what I'm talking about so as you guys pop on I was just saying tell me where you're watching from and if you would share this video and share the junk monkey love um, I'm gonna have Kate here my lovely assistant at the very end of the video give me a name of somebody who shared the video and uh, hung out and just you know gave us some support and chat with us today right and I will tell you a Secret. When you share a video, it shows up on your timeline. So how many of you guys have messaged me and said, hey, Sonia, where do I find that video of you, blah, blah, blah. You guys know I've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos, right? And so if there's something that I do that you especially love, when you share it, it's on your wall. So then you can go back and scan your, your wall for stuff 
for tutorials that I do on here, right? And I've got lots of great stuff planned for you guys coming up, guys. Um, over the next few days, we're going to be doing some really what's going to be really cool Christmas uh, gifts for people, okay? So if you're looking for like Christmas gifts on a budget, you're definitely going to want to tune in the next few days. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. But yes, $20 in banana bucks up for grabs. All you have to do is share the video. At the very end, we'll uh, holler out one lucky name. And uh, if your name is called, you have until midnight tonight, Eastern Standard Time, to email us at junkmonkeypaint at gmail.com to collect your 20 big banana bucks that you can use online at junkmonkeypaint.com and get something that you want to try, okay? So I'm not going to do anything with this, all right? This is plastic. It looks like this arm might have been glued a little bit, so we're going to have to be very careful with this here. Um, but yeah, it's just a really cool piece, right, that she found out. Look, the orange dot. You know what the orange dot means, right? Clarence, Clarence, hello. All right, so I'm going to lay this flat so you guys can see it from the camera angle, and I'm just going to go in with my black velvet because I always tell you guys, as a shabby painter, having black and having brown are going to be your two base basic colors, okay? Okay, and a white, of course, too. But especially if you're more on the shabby side when it comes to like you want to antique and you want time worn, guys, things that look aged, right? They're usually leaning towards blacks or browns, right? They they just darken over time. So I always have black and I always have brown on standby when I'm going to go for an aged effect, okay? Now she tells me she likes this kind of gold metallic black. That's how she's envisioning it. Vi envisioning it. Okay, say it with me. And you guys know I told you this week that if you ever, here's a quick tip as well. If you're like me and you don't leave, leave your lids completely sealed all the time, because for me, I paint every single day. So I tend to leave my studio with my paint uh, jars, you know, not quite on. And I'm a messy painter. But if you're somebody like me and you come back to your paint and it's starting to thicken up, all you have to do is just put a few spritzes of just water into it and uh, it will loosen up your pigments again okay so if you ever feel like your paint has sat for a while and it's thickened up that's a great way to be able to thin it out because our paint is made and has the integrity to be able to do that okay all right a lot of you guys tell me you love to even water down to the point where you can use it for lettering and stuff okay so I'm gonna go ahead with my shabby chip brush these are on our website I think Kate has put up the link below as well and I'm gonna go in so I know right now she likes these parts here but this part is the color part the fruit part we're gonna make this look all, all like one piece as much as possible we want to drown out these colors right here. We don't want the oranges and the purples and all that sort of stuff. So we're going to go in with our shabby chip brush and we're going to go ahead and just darken all that stuff out, okay? So if we just do this, this side right here, just like this, um, you know, I'm going to allow maybe just like a... Well, I definitely want the oranges to be gone, right? Anything that's like darker green, I'm okay with that. But I don't want any sort of like yellows or oranges coming through on this piece. So I'm going to just drown all those out right now. So that way, you know, you don't have all these colors of a bowl of fruit hanging out, right? She likes this, likes this, likes this. So I need to combine this all together. So what I'm going to do is leave some of this bling bling already showing through. But because I put black here, I'm going to want to carry that elsewhere, okay? Okay. So I'm again, shabby chip brush. My favorite too was a shabby painter. I'll work on one side at a time, guys, so that way you can see it. Because if I put this up straight up and down, you're not going to be able to see it, right? So it's just kind of like, you know, bring that black in other places. Not totally covering it up though, but you see what I'm going for, right? Guys, this is so awesome. If you ever find candlesticks, you know, especially for this time of the year, maybe you want to put in your fireplace. Maybe you already have a pair already and you're just over them. Who cares if they're red or, you know, robin's egg blue or whatever. It doesn't make a hill of beans because at the end of the day, you can just junk monkey them. And if you're using our chalky style paint, it's the stuff that just sticks to pretty much anything under the sun. So I don't even have to know what this is made out of. All I have to do is have a vision for it and I'm good to go, right? And then I can paint my furniture to match it perfectly. Do decor to match it perfectly. That's what's so fun about it. All right, so there we are right now. I've really just drowned out the color. So it's all, it's starting to like look really, really just non-fruit right here, right? Non-fruit, all right? I mean, the fruit's still there, but it's not like in your face, look at me, take a bite out of me, right? So let's go ahead and dry that real fast. So for those of you who are joining me, I am, this is a, a custom paint job for a dear neighbor of mine. It's a prop that will be used into a, the Christmas pageant and she's looking at, to kind of bring it together other than looking like a bowl of fruit to uh, being like a really cool priceless, priceless vessel that she's gonna be using into um, the event. So I'm liking that so far. Just a little bit of black on it, right? How cool is that guys? Do you like that? Just a little bit of black, a little bit of like black tarnish, right? Love it right there. All right. So my favorite color to go to when I'm working with metallics, you know, she was like kind of like gold, like silver, 
this has some gold on it right here already that we're gonna play up into. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my champagne color metallics, okay? I tell you guys a trick. If you don't know if you want silver or you want gold, go with champagne because champagne matches both. It is that color to the eye that you can put with gold or you can put with silver. It's really cool. As a painter, that's always the very best thing to go for. And if you're somebody out there that paints for like vendor boots and you have for uh, customers, you don't know if a customer leans more towards silver or gold, right? But when you go ahead and use champagne, your eye will basically see and reflect back whatever it is that they envision in their space. So they can pair it up with some whatever they want. All right, so this is one of my tips. I keep washing this out over and over. Matt's not in the room, but yes, I did steal his shaving brush, okay? That thing that men put on when they put their aftershave on, okay? So there you go. He doesn't use it, truth, truth be told, So, but I took it. But he's not here, so um, please don't tell him because this will be one more thing. Sonia used my toothbrush. Sonia used my shaving brush. Sonia used my, I don't know, my, my cooking spatula. You, you know what I'm saying. You know, it just goes on and on, right? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, I put a little bit out into my plate. I don't need a lot when I do this. And now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just go over it with my, somebody, there's a name on this. I know you guys know what this name is. But here's the thing, I'm, this is dry by the way, paint. I'm a repurposer, so I will use my plates over and over again. But what I'm trying to do is really dab enough of it off so that way you can kind of see it right there, like I'm offloading it, right? They are they are hard to come by. Um, it, you know, sometimes you can see like boxes of them, gift boxes and that sort of thing when, when you go to like yard sales and stuff. Just clean them, way to go. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead, just try to like bring these parts together. Because remember, this was the color part and this was like a gold tarnish part and which we are okay with having some of that come through but we want to make sure that it comes together right we're not trying to draw attention to the uh, fruit we just want it to be one overall thing cool thing all right so i love this because this has the uh, bristles of like a shabby chip brush same idea but they're round and very like does whatever they want right and because it's a harder harder bristle what happens is it uh, doesn't offload a whole lot right you know what i mean oh gosh i love that all right you guys know my deal when i get to the point where i'm saying i love it then i know it's gonna be good. I'm gonna leave a little bit of that gold showing right there because I think that's cool. All right, let's go over the top. There we go. Does that look like, you know, tarnished and aged and how long did it take us to do that, right? Bye bye purples and stuff. Oh, guys, so pretty. I mean, if you're working on your mantle for Christmas and you're just like, oh gosh, I love that. All right, I'm gonna flip it to the other side real quick so we can do the other side as well. The other cool thing that we could do is add some black glaze on top of this. You guys know that black glaze, uh, because we make and design all of our products, the cool thing is we, we make them to be able to play off of each other as a family, right? To be able to um, give you guys the tools to make beautiful furniture. So our black glaze matches our black velvet. And so, much like our brown glaze, matches our candy bar brown paint, chalky style paint. So, you could, anytime you bring like a black and you use the black glaze, it's gonna match perfectly with it, right? So if I really even wanted to tarnish this even more, you know what, I'll let this dry and we'll come back. I might glaze a little bit of it just to even give it more of uh, just really cool. You can even see the how it looks, right? So right there, it's all looking sort of the same now, right? And this is what the before was like, looking like. Brassy, purples, oranges, yellows. All right, so if you just missed that part, you're gonna be like, oh gosh, I get a replay, right? All right, let's, let's go ahead and add some black into it. Bye bye, you know, pineapples and all that good stuff. Although here's the big debate that I always say, do you like pineapple on your pizza? I could be friends with somebody who likes pineapple on their pizza, you know? Matt, not so much. My son, not so much. If I bring home a pizza that has pineapple on it, I know I can eat the entire thing myself because nobody's gonna want it, you know? Which, this could be total strategy. This could be strategy for you, you know? Your family eating all the pizza before you get a chance? Just bring home something with pineapple on it. Nobody will want it, or very few people will want it, right? So yeah, that's our poll for today. Do you like pineapple on your pizza? Well, Sharon did not like pineapples on her um, vessel here. So we're gonna go ahead and help her out with that. 
bring a little bit of that gold through like I say and I am not like trying to load my brush up to the point where it's um, you know I'm still seeing darkened parts showing through and a little bit of color showing through right there we go dance it all over so if you're staring right now at some candlesticks or you've got some candlesticks that you thought you were gonna give in the basement and give them away or donate them and then go buy some new girl save your money just go and paint what you got paint what you got so I could either just go black over that and then honestly if I really wanted to take my um, sand pad and knock a little bit off of it that's a look as well to do an aged effect and because our paints dry with a flat matte look then it imitates old time worn furniture or in this case old time worn right because anything that's old is not going to be glossy it's just not you know so there we go flat matte love that dries so quickly now I'm going to go back to my metallics here and I'm going to dab all over. You could also do this with a shabby chip brush. I just love doing this and I've learned to do this with this particular pouncer because, uh, AKA my husband's shaving brush, because it's got hard bristles and I've been doing this for a while with this particular tool. So I just know the effect it gives me. And so I'm going for it. Oh man, I love that. I love it. I love it. So the whole idea is not to make the fruit stand out purple and orange and yellow. It's to have it suck back into the piece as a whole and make this a tarnished thing. Oh my gosh, guys. Isn't that beautiful? Give me some hearts if you're, you're thinking it's pretty darn cool. Let's get the sides here. Wow. All right. Now, it's going to look straight up and down to you guys, right? But let me go ahead and grab this right here. Put a little bit... When you're looking down, little bits of the gold coming through, but no more plums. Oh, all right. I like that. What do you guys think? Now it's all looking like one piece, right? All right, let's go ahead and dry this a little bit. We can size it up. Hey Katie, how are you? Hey Kathy. This is actually, this right here, I'm using champagne. It is by Rustoleum Metal Accents, it's called. I got a bunch of these in the last few years. I haven't bought any more. And actually, some of you guys sent me some of this as well, which is awesome. So honestly, I have not bought metallic paint in a very, very long time. So I'm using up what I have left of this stash here of Rustoleum. And uh, so yeah, it's really, really easy to use. I got mine at Lowe's and I got it on sale for like, I don't know, seven or eight dollars at the time. I think they discontinued maybe. Um, I don't know if they've come back with a new, like a different branding style if it was old packaging, but for whatever reason they put it on sale and I'm a girl who loves some sales. All right guys, I love that. Let's take a look and see what it would look like if we put a little bit of the black glaze on as well because I'm just curious now, I'm gonna play today. How fun is it that I get to play, right? Have a job where you can come to work and just totally play. So the cheesecloth as well is on our website. We just got that added in for you guys finally to be able to source some good cheesecloth. And I always spritz it just a little bit and then I'm gonna go in with my black glaze. And actually I need to shake this up. Let me shake it up, shake it up. Top secret, Anna. Linda, ooh, you just wait. We, we got something up our sleeve. Oh, something up our sleeve. Can't wait to introduce you guys to a new member of the Junk Monkey Paint Company that's coming. And uh, yeah, yeah, we're getting closer. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do a test down here first. 
and see how I like this. So if I ever glaze tones down things, of course, if I don't like it, I could just bling it over a little bit more again, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit on here just to see if I like that. Oh, and I do like that. All right, just to add it in just a little bit. Tarnished and interesting, right? That's what I'm going for. If you ever needed to make like trophies or something like that, you know, if you're running something and you want to create trophies out of like I don't know, let's say for example, you have, um, you know, you're doing something with kids and, or it could be adults too, and you're, you're planning something fun. Go out and get some like interesting ceramic figures. Do this process, make it look like they won trophies of something, you know what I mean? But it could be, you could do this, you could just bling out this and it could be a kitty cat statue. You know what I'm saying? It just makes it so interesting. Who cares if it's got fruit on it? Who cares if it's purple and yellow? like that At the end of the day we want to make it look oh, it likes that what do you guys think you like it does you like it I just darkened up a lot of stuff in there by letting my glaze get into there into like in between a lot of the pieces all right let me dry that out real quick So what's everybody up to today? If you hear pounding downstairs, we are in the throes of packing and shipping got all of your paintings out as of yesterday oh my gosh 22 shabby paintings all across the country that was so fun a lot of you guys have been messaging me asking me if I would do it again and I sure would it is hard to part with the babies though I will tell you all that beautiful texture and just yumminess and mm, gorgeousness on canvas right I told Matt I feel like maybe this week and I'll get into, uh, I feel like I want to go and get some more canvases to work on. So I think I'm going to go ahead and grab a sand block, one of my used sand blocks, and I can go ahead and add a little bit. Remember how there was that gold underneath here? I can bring a little bit of that through as well. Just reusing one of my sand pads. to make it interesting. Bring a little bit of that gold through. We just don't wanna bring the colors through, right? I'm okay with it on here because we knew there was gold around the base and at the tops. all over under my feet I'll tell you something else that would have been really cool for this piece is if I um, had like a wire brush that would be a great way as well for you guys to uh, I do have some but I'm just trying to think where they are Ooh, I love a little of that gold coming through right there do you guys see that flex of it anybody ever play with copper leafing that's also fun or not just copper leafing I happen to have some copper leafing I said that but it could be gold it could be silver that's always fun as well but I'm gonna 
lay up a little bit of that color that was already there, right? That gold color. Guys, I am loving it. All right, pretty soon we're gonna be hollering out a banana bucks winner today. What do you think, guys? Pretty cool, right? Fit for a uh, for a play that's gonna it's gonna play a vessel, you know, a priceless vessel filled with with perhaps like medicine or myrrh into a Christmas pageant coming up coming up this month. So this is a custom redo, I'm just knocking some of the stuff off, but it's actually just made of plastic. But doesn't matter, you can do it in aged effect over any surface. I keep playing with it. hit it with a little bit of banana peel just kind of roughly because um, it'll give it a tiny bit of sheen but I'm gonna use a brush that's not gonna give me super super a whole lot of coverage because I want it to kind of look like you know aged right not perfect so let's go in with our banana peel here and now I'm just gonna add a little bit just a little bit. And using a brush like this, of course, just with a little bit on it, it's not gonna give me total coverage. So just know that it dries clear. This is a guide so that you're able to see our uh, poly is tinted so you're able to see what you have painted and what you have not painted. It's really good when you're painting a surface and you're like, did I get good coverage? You can look at it and right behind it, it dries crystal clear. So yay, I like that. Like that. All right, who's got a trophy or something they want to do now, all right? What would you guys do this finish on? Yep, just give it a little bit of, you know, so when it catches the light, <clears throat> especially on the tops of the handles and stuff, and it's already dried. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. All right, definitely looks like a priceless vessel of some sort. So there you go. There you go. How easy was this, guys? And so now bye-bye purples and oranges and stuff, and now we have an overall consistent color, but it still looks really tarnished and, you know, you know, just really, even though it's like a hard plastic, it's just all over one color. And so... Yay, there you go. Happy to do my part, right, for the community coming out um, to support Sharon and all of her local, just local events and stuff that she does. And so can't see, can't wait to see um, this in full costume with, uh, with her people, with her actors. Be really, really cool, right? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and holler at a winner right now. Thanks guys for hanging out with me. Um, I'm gonna go down and finish packing and shipping. I've got to go into my coaching group today at 3 p.m. Uh, let me think what else I gotta do. And so today I'll be doing a live for my retailers into my coaching group, talk to you guys on here, and then tomorrow I'll be back. I'm gonna start off a few days of like Christmas gift ideas. So join me tomorrow because um, I've got a few ideas up my sleeve. And uh, they could be really cool ideas for like, especially if you have like, you know, secret Santas, you have people in your office you want to give stuff to, um, whether it's for you to decorate with or just for somebody else. And it could be, you know, stuff that you could use for like a baby shower, it could be graduation, that sort of stuff. So we're going to come up with some really cool gift ideas. So our winner today of the banana box is, all right, Kate has handed me, Kate has handed me a name and the name is Christine McNeil. C-R-H-I-S-T-I-N-E, McNeil, M-C-N-E-A-L. Girl, you are our, woohoo, our Banana Bucks winner today. So you know the drill. I called your name. You have to email me now. I'll be waiting for your email between now and midnight, midnight tonight, Eastern Standard Time at junkmonkeypaint at gmail.com. And I will email you back a code that you can use at junkmonkeypaint.com, okay? All right, guys. So hopefully this gives you some ideas. Get out and junk and see what you can find because... 
you know, Sharon picked up an awesome find here, and I think I would have definitely picked up something like this too. This is really cool, especially um, if you want it for your, like, your fireplace or your mantle and you want to add a little bling bling into your Christmas decorations, right? And so this color is done with champagne, which is my favorite me metallic color. All right, you guys, take care. I will see you guys on here again very, very soon. Bye.